द लैंग्वेज ऑफ पोइट्री इज द लैंग्वेज ऑफ पैराडॉक्स हाउ वेट इज द स्टेटमेंट इज द लैंग्वेज ऑफ पोइट्री इज द लैंग्वेज ऑफ पैराडॉक्स एनी वे बिफोर गोइंग टू आवर मेन टॉपिक लेट मी टेल यू फ्यू थिंग्स दैट विल हेल्प अस टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस क्रिटिकल कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज आवर टू डेज कॉन्सर्न हेरासी ऑफ पैराफ्रिक्स आवर टू डेज टॉपिक इज हेरासी ऑफ पैराफ्रिक्स i hope uh, you are all familiar with this classroom method in which uh, the a poem is taught in the classroom the teacher teaches a poem in the classroom yes this method is practiced everywhere even today in the classroom so in the classroom how a poem is taught in the class simply the teacher teaches the poem he makes a paraphrase or make a makes a prose version of the poem if the poem is a smaller one then a substance and if it is divided into parts or uh, divided into stanzas then a paraphrase of each stanzas in this way he presents the poem among his students and from it the learner the learners get a surface level meaning of the poem and uh, they understand the subject matter overall meaning and the subject matter but uh, the question is that is it really a true method for understanding the aesthetic merit the aesthetic value of a poem no says the new critics new critics opine that it is not the right approach towards the meaning making of a poem or of a poetry so here comes the phrase the critical concept heresy of heresies heresy means opinion contrary to the accepted doctrine especially in the in religious matter a stance against the orthodox a stance against the stereotype things so a stance against the paraphrase against the paraphrasing of a poem is heresy or paraphrase the meaning of a poem cannot be explained simply by paraphrasing it or translating it into a everyday language such a practice neo critics 
especially clear books referred to as heresy of paraphrase what is heresy of paraphrase let me write what heresy of paraphrase is the meaning of a poem cannot be explained simply by para phrasing or translating paraphrasing or translating it every day language such practice clear book clear books referred to as heresy of paraphrase the meaning of a poem cannot be explained simply by paraphrasing it or translating it into everyday language such practice is an example of what neocritic one of the neocritics clear brook referred to as heresy of paraphrase it is a mistaken practice that tries to seek the meaning of a poem by paraphrasing or summarizing it in this way we cannot understand the meaning of a poem clear brook clear brooks use the fed heresy of paraphrase as a title of a chapter in his well known book the well wrought arm studies in the structure of poetry so client brooks used the phrase heresy a paraphrase in his book the well wrought arm studies in the structure a poetry published in 1947 actually he used the phrase as a title of a chapter in his book the well wrought arm published in 1947 he used the phrase to suggest that poetry should be taught as poetry if you change a word a line an image of a poem you will get he argue 
he argues that he, he will get a different poem. And uh, critics should resist reducing a poem to a uh, into a reducing a poem into a mere paraphrase. And critics must read the words on the page. The critics should not read a poem to get to receive uh, receive didactic message from the poem. Don't interpret a poem uh, for didactic purpose. He wants us. He wants the critic. So, Brooks argues that meaning in a poetry cannot be reduced. Meaning in a poetry is irreducible. Irreducible means cannot be simplified. Cannot, you cannot simplify a poem by making paraphrase or making prose version of the poem. This is a malpractice that, that he uh, call that he calls as a heresy of paraphrase. It, the meaning of a poem is irreducible because he says that a true poem is a simulacrum of reality. So, Clean Brooks argued that the meaning in a poetry is irreducible. Irreducible means cannot be simplified by making it into Converting it into a prose version, making a simple paraphrase. Irreducible. The meaning in a poetry is irreducible. Because a true poem, because a true poem is simulacrum of reality. An experience rather than any uh, statement of State, any statement about experience or any abstraction from experience. Let me write what exactly he said. Brooks argued that meaning in a Poetry is irreducible, irreducible because a true poem is a simulacrum of reality. An experience rather than any statement about experience or any or any abstraction abstraction from experience so according to him according to Clean Brooks according to Clean Brooks that Meaning is, meaning, sorry, 
meaning in a poetry is irreducible irreducible cannot be simplified by making it into a prose uh, cannot be uh, simplified by paraphrasing it into uh, by paraphrasing it because a true poem is a simulacrum of reality and experience rather than any statement about experience or any statement any abstraction from experience experience by this he means that poetry presents a true picture of reality to to uh, uh, what exactly the reality is the poetry the uh, poem presents this reality so brook emphasized tension structure tension paradox irony over meaning statement subject matter he also stressed on the close reading of the text and in the studies of the interior life of a poem so, so all this about heracia paraphrase i hope you got it now i shall tell i shall now i shall share with you few facts about the book about the well wrought arm the book and brooks facts about the well wrought arm the book and brooks facts about the book and brooks brooks clean brooks facts about the well wrought arm the well wrought arm and brooks the well wrought arm and brooks the well wrought arm factor effect number 1 fact 1 it is a anthology of 11 essays a collection collection of 11 essays fact Number two, the title has a allusion to the fourth stanza of Dunn's poem, John Dunn. John Dunn's poem, you know, the canonization, or uh, the he starts, he begins the book. with uh, poet john dunn and his poetry with john dunn and with his poetry he inaugurated his uh, examined he this started the book or uh, the first chapter of the book uh, that uh, uh, analyze that uh, that deals with uh, with john dunn and his poetry and fact number the title t i t a l t title of the poem had a allusion to john Poems, 
दा क्या नो नाइजे सब एंड फैक्ट्स थ्री दा पोइट हुज पोइम्स ब्रुक्स एनालाइज एनालाइज एनालाइज्ड इंटरप्रेटेड इवैल्यूएटेड द पोइट्स आर द दे आर टेन इन नंबर्स द पोइट्स हुज पोइम्स ही टू फॉर क्रिटिकल एप्रिसिएशन द पोइट्स आर डन शेक्सपियर मेल्टन पोप ग्रे वर्सवर्थ किट्स टेनिसन एक्स एलिट टेन पोएट्स एंड देर पोएम्स हि एनालाइज इंटरप्रिट्स इवेट्स इन हिज बुक दर्ल्ड आर्म दोएट सर words are done shakespeare milton pope gray wordsworth Keats, Tennyson, Yeats, W. B. Yeats, T. S. Eliot, and Eliot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Done. Shakespeare, Milton, Pope, Gray, Wordsworth, Keats, Tennyson, Yeats, and Eliot. Now, according to Clem Brooks, the language of poetry is the language of paradox. paradox is a statement that seems self contradictory but when we examine critically at the end the contradiction is settled down the contradiction becomes true true statement or actually the things as they are so according to the what there is much debated about what should be the language of poetry so different poets put forward it they are different uh, theory on the language of poetry so according to Uh, Brooks, the language of poetry is the language of paradox. According to Brooks, the language of poetry is the language of paradox. The language of poetry is the language. of paradox in 